Well, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress had called on Nigerians, irrespective of their ethnicity, religion, or political leanings, to join hands with the party and President Bola Tinubu in the task of rebuilding a better and more prosperous Nigeria. Well, reacting to the Supreme Court judgment that affirmed the president as winner of last February's presidential election, the APC's NWC, said in a statement by its national secretary, Senator Surajdin Ajibola Bashiru, that the judgment had reinforced democracy in Nigeria and underscored the vibrancy and independence of the judiciary. The party congratulated the president, saying the APC will soldier on in the business of governance, staying focused and resolute in fostering unity and improving the quality of life of all Nigerians. Well, joining us now to discuss the Supreme Court verdict and the task ahead of the governing party is APC National Publicity Secretary Felix Morka. Thank you for joining us today on Newsday. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, despite the celebration, there's a lot of work to be done, as uh, the president notably uh, uh, mentioned in his speech uh, following the uh, Supreme Court judgment yesterday. And we actually just got done interviewing uh, uh, Buddy George, uh, formerly of the uh, National Secretary of the uh, National Chairman of the PDP, and he was talking about the Constitution, restructuring. Um, a lot of these uh, topics have been buzzwords in the last couple of days. Now that the court processes have been completed, what, uh, what initiative will the APC take on in order to get these proceedings moving? And I'm talking about the, uh, you know, the updating of the electoral laws in order to iron out uh, certain ambiguities which caused um, a lot of the friction within these court judgments. And even though the judgment did seem to come out on in the favor of APC, what, uh, what, what initiative do you all have to make sure that some of these things are ironed out before the next election cycle to avoid all of this in 2027? Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> now, the question of uh, electoral reform is an unfinished business. Uh, some of the world's most advanced democracies are continuing to tweak and reform their processes because every day in this world, there's new ideas, new technology, uh, new ways of doing things and doing things more efficiently and more effectively. Uh, Nigeria is no exception. Now, just for the record, the last APC administration of President Muhammadu Buhari, uh, I think more than any other president in the history of this country, undertook far-reaching reforms of our electoral laws and processes. Now, many of the features of our current electoral, electoral act and even INEX guidelines were fostered under the you know, past APC administration. Uh, some of the technologies that everyone uh, is discussing and even took to court for the court's interpretation were innovations made by you know, uh, the APC administration. So yes, the answer to your question is yes, we remain committed uh, to transforming our electoral procedures. You know, it, it's, it's not perfect and no country's electoral system is perfect. Uh, but we will strive towards perfection to the extent that that is possible. Um, but as for the election that has gone by, it was conducted under the existing law of Nigeria. And yesterday, the Supreme Court came out very forcefully to declare that INEC complied substantially with the laws of Nigeria and was right when he returned President Bola Metinubu as the president. Uh, and that uh, you know, uh, decision was, was affirmed yesterday by the Supreme Court. 
Well, of course, I'm sure you're quite delighted with the judgment of the Supreme Court, but I'm sure you know that the opposition and the supporters are definitely not. Now, how would you reply to those that are saying that the executive has hijacked the judiciary? And what can we expect the APC government to do regarding Nigerians who are still skeptical about this administration, especially when you consider the state of the nation at the moment? Look, no matter what you do, um, when you have a population as massive as we do, over 200 million people, there's nothing you're going to do to, to placate everybody or to make everyone subscribe to the same viewpoint or the same perspective of anything, even the food we eat. Those who want to question it, we question it. That those who will continue to question the judiciary and you know, uh, impugn their integrity. Uh, but I think that... Um, Quite frankly, the courts have acquitted themselves uh, in this matter. Now, if the opposition parties had won uh, this contest in court, I am sure they will be celebrating the, the, the independence of the judiciary and calling the decision historic. Now, we are celebrating the independence of the judiciary and that they acted as objectively and as impartially as any courts are required to do. Um, and I think in the language, in the text, you know, you don't go to court to fish. You go there with evidence. Unfortunately for Atiku Abubakar and Pitobi, the body of evidence they said they brought to court evidenced nothing. And that's what the court said. And, you know, you win cases on the strength of your testimony or your witnesses on the record you present. In this case, I think they need to go back to the drawing board, hopefully in the future, uh, to do a better job, uh, both in, you know, trying to win elections, but also in presenting whatever grievances they may have uh, to the courts. All right. Um, and we do know that the Labour Party has stated, uh, I mean, we don't know if this was just a knee-jerk reaction or if they might change their mind later on, that uh, they won't be working with the APC in the future uh, in any capacity. But I want to speak about what President Tinubu said at his speech yesterday. Uh, he had a lot of uh, key points. One that stood out was his resolve to meeting and exceeding Nigerian expectations in service delivery and good governance. He promised to improve the living conditions of Nigerians and uh, with the Forex crisis and the price of everyday items skyrocketing, um, we know that some steps have been taken by the government in terms of the 35,000 uh, 35, naira allowance and the dispersion of uh, some palliatives in counties along uh, the country. But are there any more takeaways, anything we can concretely hold on to, especially in these times where everyone is feeling it? from the top to the bottom? Are there any plans that uh, haven't been unshelved that uh, could give us just a little bit of hope on the back of this uh, celebratory mood that the APC is carrying so that the rest of Nigerians can feel you know, a little bit lighter as well? Uh, yes, you know, now if Labour Party chooses not to congratulate the president uh, you know, that, that is their fundamental liberty, if, if that's what they wish to do, or not to collaborate uh, with the government to serve the people of Nigeria. Now, that, that would be a testament, I think, to, the, to their disposition and what it is they, uh, they were looking for. Now, if it's all about self-aggrandizement and self-fulfillment, uh, then unfortunately, I'm sure that they are very disappointed. But I think that political contestation must go beyond uh, just the need to you know, um, achieve or to win whatever your declared objective might be. It's also about you know, service to country. It's also about that nationalistic, patriotic duty that we all bear as citizens to reach out, especially in a moment like this, where we've witnessed all of the tensions around this election. It, I think it behoves on those who call themselves statesmen, uh, like Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar, to reach out to the president, offer their congratulatory messages, and join hands to work for this country, for the people of Nigeria. They will not be working for Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president. They'll be working for the people of Nigeria and to do opposition the way opposition should be done, which means constructive criticism, offer ideas when you have them, and, and hopefully government will embrace that. Now, you mentioned all of the efforts the government is making uh, to mitigate 
uh, the, 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 the bains of the, you know, the, the reforms that, that are ongoing. Uh, yes, the palliatives, the uh, you know, cash transfers and you know, other efforts that the government is making. But ultimately, the fullness of the benefits of the reform will come in the form of economic you know, transformation, the resetting of our priorities and mobilizing our resources towards ensuring that you know, all of the sectors of the economy perform at optimum so that you know, we can see reduction in poverty, you know, uh, increased security, uh, more you know, livelihood opportunities to our people, uh, better healthcare systems and better education. Those are all of the ideas that are uh, you know, encapsulated in the Renewed Hope agenda of, of the president. And I'm sure that from the small things to the big things, in time, I am quite certain, like the president said, that he will, by performance, exceed the expectations of Nigerians. Well, in the meantime, Nigerians have been asked to make sacrifices while these reforms are ongoing. But then, at the same time, we're wondering what sacrifices the government is making. The cost of governance is still high. Prayers have been sent to emails. They're buying expensive cars. The cabinet, the large cabinet has, you know, been inflated. So what about leading by example? Is there any plan to do that? Well, you know, cutting the cost of government is important, but it, it, it has to be relative. It's not an absolute uh, proposition. It has to be relative to, you know, the output. You know, now, I, I, the, the president has the prerogative to put together his, uh, his cabinet and his team, uh, hoping that they will um, perform as, as optimally as he wishes. Now, if that is done, I think that we need to take these things in context, measure whether at the end of the day, the contribution of this cabinet exceeds the you know, expenditures, if you will, the input factors um, you know, that has gone into the uh, production of the value that they will add uh, to the economy of this country. I am certain the, the, that the at the end of the day, of we're going to see that the value will outweigh or exceed uh, some of this cost. But I, I, I hear you. The issue of vehicles for members of the National Assembly or uh, House of Reps or you know, the other arm of the Assembly, look, Nigerians are right to you know, make comments and you know, critique uh, some of these things. But let's also keep in mind that some of these legislators are just new on the block. Now, um, I, I've heard people say, look, maybe they could have bought those cars, you know, bought the major Nigeria cars and all of that. You know, all of those ideas are valid, but you know, again, the National Assembly will make its own decisions, following its own rules, and hopefully they will understand that, yes, Nigerians have concerns, and, and that these concerns need to be uh, taken into account uh, in making decisions uh, for themselves and for the work that they do. Well, Felix Morka, APC National Publicity Secretary, thank you so much for joining us and for speaking to us on Newsday Today. Thank you.